the purpose of our project um, with Bestie Shepherd was to come in and really support and help execute the vision of three amazing educators. So we wanted a program that was going to teach these kids principals to be able to take ownership over themselves behaviorally, socially, and academically. We identified um, five projects that we would help them be responsible for. They came in and did murals and created a leadership wall where we're gonna feature past principals, um, future community leaders, and current leaders. One of our projects was um, a service project day. We stained our picnic tables and worked on our outdoor classroom. We planted trees. One of the students told the educators that she had realized that serving was giving something and not expecting anything in return. One of the most exciting things that the kids got to do was go on a field experience. We brought in a, a bank a professional who really taught them about financial responsibility. After the bank, the students got to go to a company called Whoopal. And the whole goal of Whoopal is to really inspire um, personal development and training. We're working on a leadership day where Paul Cummings will be coming, he'll be our keynote speaker. We're doing a career fair with each of the business leaders so the kids will get to hear about eight different fields. But by partnering with our corporate team and getting our resources, that's a win-win. Not only have they exponentially poured into our school with projects, but they have poured in with relationships. And the kids know who these people are, and we know who they are, and our staff and school have become very attached to them. There's a, potentially a perception problem in the community uh, with Dale Wood that it's an underachieving school. The perception that, that lots of times comes out front of your school is when people look at your report card. We particularly wanted to focus on the TCAP testing supplies. What they provided funds for us to get highlighters for our students, uh, pencils for our students. Also, um, they were able to provide us with calculators. So once the students were testing, every student would have a one-to-one -one ratio with calculators. One particular need was this, the Apperson machine that Dale Wood requested. It's a testing device that when, we, when the students test, we can run their answers through. So we can analyze, say, if 5% of these kids got this question right, but 95% got the other question right, then we need to go back and revisit that question that only 5% of the students got correct. This is a Title I school. A lot of the kids are living in poverty and may not get breakfast. I was accustomed to the last schools I worked at. We pretty much shut the building down, gave kids snacks, fed them breakfast, had them eating prior to testing. And just the comment she made this morning, she said, this is the first time we've given kids snacks during testing. Uh, and we were also able to use our remaining money, which is going to be at least $1,000, to buy equipment for the science lab. We have a computer lab, and we're looking at trying to update our computer lab and provide an interactive board in that lab. So what we're trying to do is we're going out and writing a grant to the uh, Community Foundation. We're able to get some grant writing assistance from UTC. We're able to uh, hopefully get a, a TVA robotics club formed here on campus. This is my first year as a principal and it helps me to understand that there are a ton of people in the community that, that, that have a concern for our students and our future. And I think our team proved that uh, everyone can get involved and make, make a difference, even from a basic need level. There's a conversation you have with your friends and your parents, and there's a different type of conversation you have with a doctor, a lawyer, a professional person. We dedicated about a three-month window where we would have somebody from our leadership chatting to a class present at Eastside Elementary every day for that entire time. Some of our guys do not have dads in the homes. I know what their favorite snack is, their favorite drink. Uh, a lot of the mothers work, um, which is why they don't come here to volunteer. So we really got to mentor them and get to know them, not just from reading books or shooting basketball, but really on a personal level. The kids were most excited about the trip to Chattanooga State. And we took the whole fifth and sixth grade class over there to let them experience what college life was all about. 90% of them did not know where it was, nor had any of them been there. One of the students mentioned to me while we were kind of walking around campus, he said, so you can, you can take class that starts at 12 p.m and you can take all math classes and no science classes? And I said, yeah, you can. You pick what you want to study and you pick your hours. They really, really were excited about going there. But it opened their eyes. And I never thought that a trip to Chattanooga State would have been so beneficial. And then the career fair, which we're going to be doing in a few weeks, is we're just going to have it over here at the Eastside Elementary. And we're going to have several tables set up 
and uh, several different folks from lawyers to nonprofits to magazine sales reps. These people can help them understand and realize that whatever you dream to be, it's possible, look at me. Because they're going to be the future of what Chattanooga is. And so I think that if we can get more business professionals working with education and students um, in around all the schools, not just Eastside Elementary, it would make a positive impact on Chattanooga as a whole. The goals of our leadership Chattanooga team at Hillcrest Elementary was to create a sustainable mentorship program. We looked at a select group of students who struggled socially and didn't get along with peers or maybe had some problems with interactions with peers or with teachers. They just want to talk to somebody. They want to, for someone to listen to them. And we knew that if we could change a select group of students' behavior inside the classroom or at least help with those social situations, that it would improve the overall dynamics inside the class. You know, if your grades are suffering, you know, I can help tutor you. If you're, um, you don't know how to react in a certain situation, I'm here to help you with that. So I wanted my students to have exposure to people in the professional world that can maybe talk to them about careers and about the importance of education. When I had the conversation with my mentee about college, it had never even crossed her mind as to the fact that she could go to college. The kids are always excited. We had one kid when the program first started, he wanted to show his mentor off. So he always wanted his mentor to come to the classroom because he wanted all the other kids to get to see his mentor. Our main goal was mentorship, but we wanted to repair the playground that desperately needed repairs. I can't imagine a school functioning with 350 children without a playground. Thank you, I saw changes in students' behavior socially. I've seen students that were struggling in class every day with inappropriate behaviors start acting appropriately towards their peers and towards their teacher. Well, we found at Hillcrest Elementary that mentorship is a great way that a business professional can get involved at a school. It doesn't take any money. It just takes your time. It was identified early on you know, by the leadership here at the school, how important it was to have, you know, the parents involved in their kids' education. You know, if parents are satisfied and they're getting what they need and they're meeting the basic needs of the family, they're able to support students better. We work collaboratively together and identified three major goals for our project. One was to design and construct a family resource center. And the thought process behind this project was that we could draw the parents in here, oftentimes by way of the computer labs or the additional resources to help them personally, but then in turn they would take a greater interest in their child's education. Where well, they can access grades and check on um, their daughter or their son and see what they're not doing and, able, and they're able to meet with the teacher and get things done so they can get the child back on track. The second goal was to design and construct a new uniform closet for students. Um, we were able to fundraise and gather donations from different community groups. We actually just had a family who suffered a great loss through a house fire and to have uniforms readily available to supply to those students that was one less thing that the parent had to be concerned with during such a time. They got the ideas and they've got the manpower and the effort to go forward but sometimes it takes money to get things done. And then third we wanted to have an event where we showcased our progress to the parents of the school. They absolutely love the computers and been able to come in and do some of the things that they need to sustain the family. We're starting a parent university and that would be the opportunity to offer different courses that the parents have actually suggested and that they're interested in. If the community helps with this family involvement, I think there'll be great things coming out of Orchard Knob.